there's been all this talk about the Space Force, a little bit of its history, and also this weird thing called I-5. But you probably are still wondering, what can you do in the Space Force? Well first, make sure you're between the ages of 17 to 39, a US citizen, and have at least a GED. If you have a college degree, then even more careers are open to you on the officer level. Also, if you're a current military member, there are ways to transfer to the Space Force, but those requirements are constantly changing. Everyone's got to take either the ASVAB if you are wanting to become an enlisted member of the Space Force, or the AFOQT for future officers. As an enlisted member in the Space Force, there's a wide variety of many awesome jobs you can get involved in. Now, I don't want to take up too much of your time here, so I'm going to go through each of the different career fields as fast as I can in just a couple of sentences. None of these are comprehensive, and it is always recommended to do your own research before jumping into a new career. Also, make sure to check out the links in the description for more opportunities, as the Space Force is constantly evolving. The first job on our list for Space Force careers is Cable and Antenna Systems. Cable and antenna systems operators make sure that we can communicate with our friends and families all over the world. From local area networks, to wide area networks, to antenna systems, cable and antenna systems operators ensure we can continue to monitor missions and communicate with our fellow guardians from anywhere in the world. Their technical training following basic military training is 80 days over in Texas. The next one is client systems. Instead of focusing on networks, these personnel focus on making sure our computers and other technology work. They're basically the tech gurus who troubleshoot and repair any technological problems. Without these guys, very unexpected things could happen. Following BMT, you'll complete 67 days of tech training in Mississippi. Computer Systems Programming Computer systems programmers focus on designing and analyzing computer programs essential to warfighting capabilities. These range from maintenance tracking programs to programs that organize and display intelligence data. I'd also love to see like a 3D version of Galaga or something, you know, when you guys are not too busy creating other game-changing algorithms. Following BMT, 70 days are spent in tech training in Mississippi. Cyber surety. These men and women are responsible for preventing, detecting, and repelling cyber attacks, as well as make sure our computer networks and other online forms of communication are safe. Essentially, these are our guardians' guardians, protecting the software and hardware they use to carry out any task. 50 days are spent in tech school in Mississippi. Cyber Systems Operations. Similar to the previous careers, these guys also do a lot of designing and supporting technology. Their focus is on the actual systems used to ensure they operate properly, as well as make sure they are safe from any outside intrusion. They primarily focus on computer and software systems. 66 days are spent in tech school in Mississippi. Cyber Transport Systems. The infrastructure of our global communications network and its overall awesomeness depends on cyber transport system specialists, as they are the ones who repair network hubs, install fiber optic cables, and just overall make sure all of our communication systems are good to go. 136 days are spent in tech school at Mississippi. Next up is Fusion Analyst. Stepping away from computers and stuff, Fusion Analysts primarily deal with intelligence gathered from target network communications, analyzing its information, and determining its value and potential implications. These individuals are key in determining how important a particular piece of information is, and their findings are essential to high-level decision makers in the Space Force. The technical training is about 110 days in Texas, followed by Space Warfighter ISR formal training in Colorado. Next up is Intelligence Analysts. Just like Fusion Analysts, Intelligence Analysts also handle intelligence, but theirs usually comes from raw data, in which they'll analyze and assemble alongside intelligence from other sources like cyber, networks, and in field. They also should have a good understanding of other geographical and cultural differences around the world. They also do the same technical training as Fusion Analysts in the same places, likely with little differences. Knowledge Operations Management. Responsible for coordination and distribution of information and data, knowledge management specialists will support the mission through creating launch manuals, storing and disposing high-level documents, and overall keep the flow moving along by essentially managing the life cycle of communications and information that are imperative towards mission success. Following BMT, 41 days of tech school are required in Mississippi. Radio Frequency Transmission Systems. These guys are responsible for installing and maintaining radio frequency communications, deploying, sustaining, troubleshooting, and repairing the majority of all of communication devices, including, but not limited to, antenna systems, turners, and transmission lines. After BMT, 96 days of tech training in Mississippi. And now we have the Signals Intelligence Analysts. Any type of foreign activity goes through our signal intelligence analysts, as they extract, analyze, and identify foreign activity and communication from electromagnetic emissions 
relaying their findings through intelligence reports, notifying whoever needs to be notified regarding unusual foreign activity or critical situations that may require immediate action. Following BMT, their tech score ranges from 74 to 84 days. Next up we have the Space Systems Operator. See ballistic missile launching in your direction? Are you being tracked by some satellite? Our Space Systems Operators will make sure we're in the clear, while also assisting in things like rocket launches or spaceflight operations. One of the most important skills in this position are to be able to keep it cool in hot situations. After BMT, tech school ranges from 51 to 100 days in California for enlisted undergraduate space training. And last, but not least, we have our targeting analysts. These dudes literally target the targets, essentially being our eyes in the expansive domains in which the Space Force operates, both land and space. They supervise potential threats while building plans for potential counterattacks if necessary. Their technical training is about six and a half months of training in Texas, followed by Space Warfighter ISR formal training at Peterson Space Force Base, Colorado. Now remember, the longer the Space Force is around, the more options and opportunities there will be. And don't forget, do some additional research on each of these careers, because you may potentially find one that really sparks your interest. Now, if you have a degree, you may be eligible to become an officer in the Space Force. Whether that be through ROTC, the Academy, or Officer Training School, your officer opportunities are equally the same, and equally as cool. While ROTC is normally done in three to four years, and the Academy is four, Officer Training School lasts about nine and a half weeks. Regardless of which path you choose, each of them will turn you into an officer in the Space Force. First up, we have the Space Operations Officer. As a space operations officer, you would direct the systems that we have in place that utilize satellites and enhance communications and tracking. They oversee space surveillance, space lift, space warning, and satellite command and control. To defend our nation, these officers may be tasked with formulating space operations policies, establishing training requirements and performance standards for all systems, or plan and direct space operations programs, amongst many more things new and upcoming. And now we have the Cyber Warfare Operations Officer. The space domain doesn't just mean outer space, as you should know by now, but also includes those things we hold in our hands all the time, what we do most of our homework on, and most importantly, how we learn essentially everything. The internet. As a cyber warfare operations officer, you're essentially that cool hacker dude from all those action movies, except you're actually real. Your primary mission will be to keep our cyberspace secure, so we can prevent our government agencies and facilities, such as the Pentagon, from being hacked. With over 36 million email breach attempts on the Pentagon daily, your job is critical to mission success. Also in the cyber domain, we have the Cyberspace Operations Officer. As a Cyberspace Operations Officer, you'll be one of the smartest experts in our ever-changing cyberspace domain, and we will rely on you in technological aspects of communication, ranging from computerized satellite and airborne communications to postal operations and tracking systems. You'll oversee both offensive and defensive cyberspace operations all around the world. We could never have too many people looking over intel, and we could absolutely never have too many people leading these intel analyses. Intelligence officers are key components to mission success. They're responsible for protecting and collecting data from external threats, as well as analyzing data to determine an adversary's capabilities, as well as its vulnerabilities. Although most of these officer positions just require a bachelor's degree, some level of foreign language study is highly desirable in any field regarding intel. Guardians need to have what they need when they need it. These officers develop the structures and training regimen to make sure we make sure that happens. You need a cool laser thing, they'll get it for you. You want to get a rocket, they'll get you a rocket. Well, well, okay, you might have to fill a little bit more paperwork out regarding obtaining your own rocket, but still, they got you covered. Just pay shipping and handling. Our sixth and final officer position in the United States Space Force as of April 2022 is the developmental engineer. If we have a mission, the last thing we want to happen is something like this. Anyways, developmental engineers ensure that our technology will not fail. These engineers specialize in many things, ranging from aeronautics to computer systems to flight testing, mechanical stuff, all this crazy cool stuff. And they're also responsible for planning and implementing their projects essential to the success of any operation that we deem essential to the fight. This particular position requires the completion of Defense Acquisition University, the Air Force Flight Test Engineer course, or something comparable, and a minimum of 24 months of experience in a qualified position or a master's degree in a specified discipline, as well as 12 months of experience or a PhD in a related field. So this job takes a bit longer to acquire. Now it's important to note that all of these careers are going to require a little bit more education than just a bachelor's degree and a lot of learning on the job. 
And if you're interested in a career you may not be qualified for, don't worry. The Air and Space Force will train you, or at the very least, point you in the right directions towards obtaining these requirements. <sighs> now that was a mouthful, and it's only gonna grow. The Space Force and the Space Domain are always growing and increasing, and as the needs in the Space and Cyberspace Domain increase, so will what we ask from those who serve. Any one of these officer or enlisted careers is critical to the mission, and all of them are just as rewarding. If you want to take the next step towards a career filled with unpredictability, yet exciting opportunity, then jump right into the Space Force and talk with the recruiter by first clicking the links in the description for more information. I'd love to see you in the Space Force just as much as I'd love to see you in the next video.